CSIS 1430 is filmed before a live studio audience. All right, so what we're going to be talking about today is a couple things. The box model and then positioning. And the box model is tricky business and positioning is trickier business. And part two of positioning is trickiest business of all, right? Before we get there, though, before we get to the box model and positioning, I want to make sure that we're clear on a couple things. So first thing, what are the three foundational components of CSS? They are selectors, properties, values. There we go. Now, next question. How do you get good at CSS? Practice. Practice what? What do you got to kind of know? Yeah, you got to know those three things on the screen, right? You got to know what are the selectors. You've only been exposed to like three. Right, how to select all H1s or all images or all divs or whatever. And then you've been exposed to classes and IDs. Right, That's all that you've really seen. Maybe one other one in the other video, but that's about it. We're going to look at maybe one or two more ideas here today. There are about 60, maybe that's a little high, but 40 or so selectors out there, different ways to select things. You can select things based on if it has a particular attribute in it. You can select things based on where it's at in the document. Like I can select specifically target the third LI in a bullet point list. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. We will get to it eventually, not today, but it'll happen in a few weeks. But properties and values, you got to know those now, right? And you can't memorize all properties. There's just, there's too many, right? I mean, you can, but there's no need to, right? But there's a handful that you're going to use all the time. Padding, margin, border, font, color, background color, things like that. You're going to use them all the time. Okay. So you got to get used to them. Some of them have specific values, like for example, border dash style, right? There's only a handful of values. There's dotted, there's dash, there's inset, outset. There's a few that we've looked at, right? All right. So I want to make sure that we feel OK there and you understand going forward how to get better at this stuff. Then I'm going to lead you into the box model now. So I gave you two little, call them mantras, on the day one of CSS, which was a week ago, I think, from today. Do you remember what they were? Everything is a box. That's one of them. Very good. Everything is a box. So I have one indoctrinee into my cult. <laughs> Everything is a box. That's thing number one. There was one other one. Put a border on it. What does that mean? I haven't told you what it meant yet. Okay, but put a border on it. We'll see what that means today. All right. So let's dive into this box model business. All right, so take a look at this thing on the screen here. This is a mock-up of how the box model kind of works. Now, notice the different color squares there. Those are enlarged just for clarity's sake. Now, you do have control over in your real box how big they are. But this is a box. Well, what's a box? Everything. Everything's a box, right? Everything is a box. It's a paragraph. It's an image tag. It's a div tag. It's a span tag. It's an anchor tag. It's a whatever. It's a box. Everything's a box, OK? This is how they work. First of all, inside in the little yellow section there, that is, let's say this is a paragraph, for example. That's where the text goes, the actual content of the box. The content of the box might be another box it might be an image tag it might be something else but whatever the actual content is is in that yellow section then you can put a border around it which is the blue there and the distance between the content and the border that purple section that's the padding okay so ignore the red for just a minute the blue is the actual width of the box it's how that's the edge of the box width right the border Sometimes you don't have a border on it. Sometimes you have a skinny border. Sometimes you have a huge border. Just depends on what you're doing. The red, the margin here is your real estate that you own as a box. It's like your fence around your yard. Okay. Your house is the box. Okay. The yard is your fence and your neighbor cannot put their house against your house because there's a margin there. There's some space. So in that little space between your neighbor and your house, that's the margin area right? It's not the actual house. That's what's going on here. That's what the red is. What makes this a little interesting, a little tricky, is if you decide that you want the width of a box to be, say, 200 pixels, but then you put 
a padding on it and a border on it, which is, this is probably what you were talking about a second ago that was frustrating you, right? You put a padding on it and a border on it, suddenly the width is no longer 200 pixels. It's 200 pixels plus the padding plus the border. The box resizes, right? And that can be very frustrating. I'm gonna show you how to deal with that today, okay? That's the basic, you know, overview of the theory of it, but let's see this in action. So let me show you guys a little trick that I do here that you can copy this idea if you'd like. The only exception is you cannot do this on your five minute websites, all right? But here's the idea. In my CSIS 1430 folder, just like I had you guys set up, I have a thing right here that says web template, all right? Inside of web template, there's a CSS folder, an image folder, a JavaScript folder, and the index. And inside of CSS, there's actually a style sheet in there. Inside of JS, there's actually a JavaScript file in there. We'll learn about that another day. There's even a couple images in there. And if I open up the index file, you'll see that it's linked up to my style sheet and my JavaScript, which we'll learn another time. And it's all ready to go. It's a, it's a project just ready to go. So what I do when I'm gonna do a new project is this. I just copy that web template, copy paste, control C, control V, or command C, command V. And then I rename it to boxes or whatever. So there it is, that, now I have an, a project ready to go. So you can do that for each of your assignments. Just get a thing set up, a template set up, and then use it for all of your assignments. I'm gonna drag it out to my desktop though, right here, so we have access to it and we can play around with it. First thing I'm gonna do is delete this stuff that we haven't learned yet, so don't worry about that, don't worry about that. Everything else is ready to go, we'll just call this box model, and I'm gonna open up the style sheet and we'll get rolling. And the style sheet has some stuff in it. I'm gonna have you also ignore for the moment. We'll learn another time. So here we go. First thing you can see in my style sheet, that top line there, that's how you make comments. Slash, star, put the comment in, and then star slash. Right, you can make comments to yourself just to organize things. All right, so let's look at how this box model business works in action here. So in the body, we're gonna make a div. All right, there we go, four boxes. So when I refresh the page, which I don't even think I've opened yet. What do you expect to see when I open up the page? It'll be stacked, like so, okay? Why are they stacked like so? Because from the last video, we learned about the, the display property, right? Their default for almost every element, the default is block. What does that mean? Well, here's one way to find out. Put a border on it and you'll be able to figure it out. Okay, let me show you. In the style sheet here, we're gonna target the div boxes, and we're gonna do a border, two pixels, solid, Tucker, give me color. Forest green. Forest green, nice choice. All right, and I refresh, and look at that border. It takes up the whole width of the page. Each of those divs owns that entire space. All right, let's separate those a little bit with some margin here. We'll just do top and bottom margin of like 20, and we'll leave the rest of it zero. Okay, each of those divs owns the entire piece of real estate, if you will, from the left edge to the right edge. Now, if I decide to put a border, or excuse me, a margin, let's make it smaller, on the left and right as well, notice it doesn't go quite against the edge of the screen, but it still owns that space, right? It owns that space, it owns the whole thing. And in fact, even if I say width is 200, it still owns that entire space. Notice the B, there's plenty of room at the end of A for B to be next to it, right? But A is like, no, that's my yard, right? You can't see it, but that's the margin. It's not the margin, it's just that A owns that whole width. The margin's only a little teeny five pixels or whatever I put in there, 10 pixels or whatever. But it owns the entire width. All right, we good on that concept? I'm gonna give it a height of 200 as well so that it's a square. And let's shrink it up a little bit. Next thing I want to do is I want to center that text in there. And I want to make it bigger. And let's actually give it a background color. There we go. Nice. Hot pink and green. Looks good. All right. I want that font real quick to be white. Okay. There we go. Color white. And I want that to be font family here's a new one for you we haven't done that one yet chiller 
So we'll put new properties down here. Chiller is like a really small font, so it needs to be kind of huge to see it. So we're gonna do font size, like 75 pixels. Okay, that's pretty good. So now notice, what what did I we talk about last time? Not last time, but the time before last. When you see a dash in a property name. Yeah, whenever you see a dash in a property name, whatever's to the left of the dash, that property name alone exists. So there is a thing called font, just font, that you can do. And it's a shortcut for family and size and a bunch of different things, right? And if you want to learn about that, feel free. But I hardly ever use that one. I always use the individual pieces, right? Okay, so now we got this big font. It's white. I want to center that text. How do we do that? Text align center. There you go. Text align center, okay? Now, the next thing, I want to center it vertically. I wish. <laughs> Vertical line, I wish. No such thing. And this is not an exaggeration. There have actually been probably hundreds of documents written about how to vertically align stuff in a div in CSS. Like master theses on this subject. I'm not kidding. It's tricky. And every one of them is some sort of crazy hack that only works in some browser and like and every person who writes about it, their goal is to be the best one and it works in all browsers and guess what? Never happens. So CSS finally figured this out. And this idea of Flexbox was developed, right? We're not gonna learn about Flexbox today, but Flexbox will solve all of your vertical alignment issues, I promise. Flexbox is awesome, okay? But we still need to use this stuff. So my question for you is how could I sort of mimic vertical centering with this, with some of the things we already know? Uh, not margin, close. Padding, right? If I, t if I change the top padding, push it down, that'll push the A down, right? Or the B or the C or whatever, right? So padding top, and we'll give it like 55 pixels. And the A and the B and the C and the D will move down, but the box got bigger, right? Why'd the box get bigger? Because height is equal to whatever height you said it was, plus the padding, plus the border, right? Well, the border in this case is like two pixels. So that's four, top and bottom, two, two each. The padding is 55 on the top, so now we're at 59, plus the height of 200, so at 259 pixels is how big that box is. That's messy, right? One way you could do it is subtract that from here. So what's 200 minus 59? That's 141, is that right? Sounds right. Maybe that works. That works okay, right? It's not bad. Now the box is 200 tall total. But what if somewhere along the way you change the padding or something? And now you got to go back and change the height of all your boxes again. It's kind of ridiculous. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. There is a better way. Let's go back to 200. There's a property called box sizing. Box sizing has about four, about three or four values, right? One of the values is called border box. Box sizing border box says, hey, CSS, listen carefully. I don't care what you have to do, but when I say height of 200, I mean height of 200. I don't care if my border is 10 pixels wide. I don't care if, or 10 pixels tall. I don't care if the padding is 50 pixels. I want the entire box to be whatever I said on line nine and 10 there. So this will override all of that stuff where everything resizes out of your control. And you'll see that going back here, this looks the same because we I changed the number back to 200. So when I had that 1541, it was it looked the right way. So if I take, in other words, if I take this out, we get that problem. But when I put it in, hallelujah, we have what you're looking for. And that would probably solve the problem you were dealing with, right? Yes. It is very frustrating when you don't know about that. Okay, so questions about that basic idea. 
good question. The question is, can CSS do variables? Can I set something like, you know, website padding equals 20, and then everywhere in my CSS just refer to that instead of having to type 20 everywhere or whatever? And the answer is yes. I've actually added it to this semester as a, a topic that we'll be covering in the future. First, for this will be the first semester we actually cover it. Because in previous semesters, I didn't want to cover it because the browser support was too risky. And that's typically how I've modeled this course. Every semester, I usually add new topics. When I add them, they're maybe a couple years old, but the reason I wait is because I wait for browser support. What's the point of teaching you something that's supported by one browser that nobody uses, right? So now it's at a point where it's useful. So we will get to that eventually, yeah. That's, that's good stuff. Right, so just a minute ago, we changed this padding at the top to be 55, and it turned out I got kind of lucky. I mean, it's pretty much centered. It looks good enough, right? But what if I missed? What if I took a guess at 35, and that wasn't quite right? I'm like, all right, let me try, you know, 40, see what that's like, right? That's kind of ridiculous, right? So there's, there's a better way. There's got to be a better way. Right-click on your browser, go down to inspect, and then over here on the right, this is a model of what the web page is like. Click on that arrow right there, and it drops down and shows you your divs or whatever. Click on one of the divs, the one you're trying to manipulate. When you click on it, if you look down below here, it shows you your CSS. You can change it right there live on the fly. So for example, I can just uncheck this background and it moves it, okay? Well, what you can do here, go to your padding right there. I know it's kind of small and highlight it and it'll let you change it. Well, rather than just keep typing a bunch of numbers on it, I'm just going to use my arrow keys and push it. And when I, when I change it, look on the left and watch the letters, they're moving. So as I'm changing it in the style sheet, I'm seeing it live, real time being changed. And I keep moving until it gets where I think it looks good and I'm going to stop right about there. And it turns out that says 61 pixels. Now that doesn't change my style sheet. It just plugs in a number to see what it would look like. So now I go to my style sheet and put 61 in and it'll, and it'll be where I wanted it. That's a handy trick, I do that all the time. You use it to line it up and eyeball it, see exactly what you want, and then put it in your code. All right, so basic box model stuff. Feeling okay? All right, phase two, positioning. We're gonna talk about two parts of positioning, okay? We're gonna talk about the float, and we're gonna talk about like actual positioning where you physically grab something and stick it where you want it, right? The float is first though, let's look at that. So right now, remember, what A does right now, it takes up that entire space across the top row, B takes up the next spot, and so on down the line. Well, because of that, B is forced to go on the next line, C is forced to go on the next line. But if I wanted to, I can push them all next to each other, right? I can have them float to the top, really float to the left. So what float does is this. Currently at the moment, A owns this entire real estate right here. And so when B comes along, moves into the neighborhood, B's like, dude, I wanna be your neighbor. And he's like, too bad, I own all that property, you're not getting anywhere near it. So he's like, fine, I'll move in down here, right? Same thing with C, same thing with D. And of course they each follow suit. B is like, well fine, A is being a jerk, I'll be a jerk and won't let C move in next to me, okay? Well, when you float, here's what happens. B is gonna float to the left and move like Pac-Man and come out on the other side of the screen like Pac-Man does, right? It's gonna come out right over here. And he's gonna keep going until he runs into A's margin. Now A's margin at the moment is five pixels, so B will never get closer than right about there with my perfectly straight line. B will never get closer than that, right? And then C is gonna do the same thing when we turn the float on. C is gonna move over, he's gonna come out over here, he's gonna keep going, just follow the path that B did, he's gonna come up here and keep going, and you know B is somewhere right here now. C is gonna end up right there and then D will end up right here. Dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? So let's try it. It's simple. The property is called float, 
and you give it a direction. Left, right, or none. We're gonna float left, and we shall see exactly that behavior I just described. Now, are they really scooting off the screen and moving to the right? No, not really. That's just a way to think about what's gonna happen, okay? With that being the case, let's go back to no float. I'm gonna float it to the right now. What do you expect to happen based on what I've told you about how the float works? Yes, it will be backwards, very good, exactly right. Because A is gonna float all the way to the right, and then B is gonna float all the way off of the right, so far to the right, that's gonna dip on the left side of the screen at the top row, and all the way over till it bumps into A, and so on and so forth. So it's backwards, okay? Now what potential issue can you see with that? You, you might, it might end up being, what if those were like your navigation buttons or something, and you want your home page to be on the left, and then when you float everything to the right, you want the navigation bar on the right like that, but you want it home to be in the spot where D. So now you have to reorder your, your um, HTML or something like that, right? There are other ways to deal with this. But maybe the content's now out of whack. Maybe you wanted what's in A to be the first part of the content. So there's lots of things you have to think about when you're floating. Again, Flexbox solves a lot of this stuff. But here's the thing, when Flexbox first came out, the whole HTML and CSS world was like, oh great, we don't need floats anymore. And then when the grid came out, which we will also look at in this class, everybody's like, oh, we don't need Flexbox anymore. No, not even close. You need all three of those. They all have different purposes and they all have different things they can do. And sometimes I'll have a grid, which you don't even know what that is yet, but I'll have a grid with a Flexbox component in the grid, and in the Flexbox that's in the grid, there's something floating in there. That's not an uncommon thing, okay? So don't think that I'm showing you antiquated stuff here. This is stuff that you need to know. Okay, there's one other little wonky thing that you need to be aware of. We're gonna go back to the left, and then in here, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna duplicate that. Right now, there's no Beavis class, so it's not being targeted, so no styles are being applied to it. Let's see what happens. They're up here. So let's talk about a couple things. One, why are they on top of each other? So what he said was it has something to do with what's going on with the float, but I'm going to remove these things that are being floated completely out of the document. So all we have is this, these little ABCDs here. They're still stacked on top of each other. Why are they stacked on top of each other? Because it's its own div and divs are display block and they take up the whole width of the page, right? That's what they do, right? So let's, let's see what's going on here. I put these back here and we've got the ABCD on the right. Now, when I asked you the question a minute ago, what's going on here? And we weren't sure. There's a way to figure out, to help us be more sure. What is it? Put a border on it. That's exactly right. Very good. Put a border on it. So we called that Beavis. So we'll style up all the Beavi. Div.Beavis. Fabulous. Here we go. Now look at that. I'm going to guess that none of you expected that behavior. If you didn't have that border there, my guess is that most of you would have thought that the border started right where the letter started. You probably would have guessed something like this, that the border was here, right? Not all the way to the left, because the letters are right there. That's probably what you would have guessed. That's what I guessed the first time I saw this, right? So this is a little bit tricky. What's happening here is this. In the past, remember, A took up the whole width. Even when you told A to only be 200 pixels wide, it still owned the whole width. So it wouldn't allow B anywhere near it. Once you turn the float on, that goes out the window. So D, which used to be down here, taking up the whole thing, even though D was only this big, D is now stuck on the float. And so he no longer has possession of the, the whole width of the page. So what happens when somebody new comes along in the neighborhood, A, B, C, and D? Well, they just go right to the edge of the document, which is right there. 
That's where the edge is, right? But the the content is there, but the box itself, because A is a div that's not got any extra width applied to it to make it smaller or whatever, and I'm talking about little a here, it takes up the whole width like a normal div would. So you get this really weird issue here, okay? You could argue that it's a bug in CSS or that it's just a feature that's that they there's a purpose for, okay? I don't know that I find a useful purpose for it, but there's a way to fix it. What we really want and the behavior that most of you would probably expect is that A, B, C, and D are down here, right? That they're down here like, like the normal, like these little guys are down there, okay? So we can make that happen, no problem. If we just go in here to the Beavis boxes and we simply say clear, that's a new property, left or clear right or clear both. We're just going to clear the left. So what this means is at the end of, or sorry, at the beginning of light blue A, clear the float, which means stop being part of the float. The float ended at D, we're done, we refresh it, and now these guys move down below and they go back to the normal flow of the document. So the float messes with the flow of the document, right? So the question was, what if I wanted them back there? So let's, let's get rid of this part here. We wanted them there, but we didn't want that border to go all the way to the left. There's a quick solution for that. It's a couple ideas. You just float the little, the other A's, right? So you could float the rest of them. So let's just leave the, put the float on these guys as well. Cause notice Beavis is not floating, right? Box is floating, div.box is floating. So Beavis, which is all the light blue guys, they're not floating. They're just going to where the end of the document is, which is at the end of D because D is floating. Right? But now if I want to float them as well, we'll get almost what you're looking for. Right? They're they're not taking up all that space, they're just taking up however much room their content is, because I haven't assigned them a width yet, right? If I assign them a width, they can we can adjust that. But you want them stacked, right? Yeah. So to get these to go from there to being stacked on top of each other, here's probably the easiest way to do it. Take Beavis here. Put a div around it called class wrapper or pick a name, doesn't matter what the name is. Put these guys inside. So now I have this one thing called wrapper that I'm going to float up against D, right? So let's go back over here and we'll do div wrapper and we'll put the float on and then we'll leave this alone and refresh and that should give you what you're looking for, right? Now, it took me 20 years to get to that point where I could see a solution like that. Right? Don't feel bad if you're like, I have no idea. I would have never come up with that. Don't feel bad. Okay. This stuff is crazy. But where I started getting good at it is the mantra, put a border on it, stick a border on it. So right now, if I put a border on the wrapper here, two pixel solid purple, I can see exactly what's happening there. That box is just the size that I told it to be, which was default of be as big as your content. That's it. Okay. And now it's being floated. It's floating just like A, B, C, and D. Normally that purple box would take up the whole width of the page, but because we floated it, it's just taking up a little bit there. Exactly. Yeah. We put four boxes in a box and we floated the box. Exactly right. Deep man. Sure. The question was, can I just put a border on everything in here? Yeah, you totally can do that. The issue we'll run into, first of all, the ones that inside of the CSS that I put in the content is overriding everything. So if I get rid of all of this, get rid of all these borders here, override. So now nothing's going to override it. Now everything's yellow. Well, let's just take, for example, this ABCD right here. Those two yellow borders there doesn't really help me distinguish which the outer box and what's the inner box. I'm not going to leave the border in the final product. This is just me for troubleshooting, right? And so if I want to figure out what's going on with the little A, B, C, and D here, I need two different colors so I can see, right? But yeah, you can apply a border to the whole thing if you want. And if you're, depending on what style you're doing, you that might be a thing you would do as a style choice to put borders on everything, depending on what you're doing. But as far as the troubleshooting goes, I put individual borders on everything. Now, sometimes what I will do is I'll have a second style sheet that is just all the borders 
it's it's the purple one for the divs and the light blue one for these divs and just that's all that's in that style sheet and then in my html you can have multiple style sheets in there i'll just turn that css on and off in the html and then i can turn the borders on and off very easily just while i'm troubleshooting okay and i'll show you how to do two style sheets in a minute other questions about this floaty business this is the easy part of positioning by the way okay the next part is trickier All right, let's go down to here and inside a position and inside of Pandora's box is a cat. What I want you to imagine, this is a house. The yellow is the house. The gray are bedrooms or some rooms in the house. The green is your yard. The white is a white picket fence, okay? All right, the cat is some box that's, right now he's nested. He's in a room that's in a house that's in a yard. Dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Like all cats, he is evil and disobedient. And you're going to tell the cat a very specific place you want him to go, and he will refuse. You tell the cat, I want you to stand in the corner. You're being punished for being evil. And the cat will refuse. And the way you tell a cat to stand in the corner, you say, I want you to go to the top zero position and the left zero position top zero left zero well you tell the cat that and he doesn't do it you put in your code top zero left zero and he just sits there and looks at you nothing then you got to get firm and you say i'm absolutely demanding you cat to go to top zero left zero so the cat's like all right fine i'm gonna go you didn't tell me zero what what room i'm going to go all the way out to the fence and sit right there top left zero zero because he's a nasty mean annoying cat because that's what cats do so the moment i told him absolute which is a property we're going to look at a value he decides to go all the way to the top okay let's start there let's take a look in the code so here in the code here's the html and this is the green yard, the yellow house, the gray rooms, and the cat is inside of the gray room, right? And then we have style number one, which makes it look like that PowerPoint, the style sheet number one. Style sheet number two is empty. We're going to put some stuff in it. Actually, get rid of that. We're going to put some stuff in it in just a minute. Let's run it, though, see what it looks like, first of all. So there it is, okay? So there's the cat, there's the gray room, there's the yellow house, and there's the green yard with the white picket fence. All right. If I tell this cat, here's a position, a property, a new property, I want you to go to the top, the zero position at the top, and the left position zero. What I'm saying by those num those values is I want you to move zero pixels, points, whatever's down from the top. So zero from the top is just on the top. And I want you to move zero from the left, which means you're all the way at the left. You're standing in the corner of the wall. But when I do this, I told you the cat refuses. I refresh, the cat does nothing. Sits there, because he's evil. Just look at him, look at that face. Evil. All right, so I told you I had to put my foot down and I say, I want your position. I want you to absolutely do what I said. Position absolute. Now the cat says, fine, I'll do what you said. But because I'm a sarcastic cat, I'm going to go all the way to the absolute edge of our property. And I'm going to go sit on the fence right there. That's the top zero left zero, isn't it? Even though I wanted you to do it in the room you were in, not on the edge of the fence. Because cats are annoying. All right. We can control the cat's behavior a little bit. What I need to say is what I meant to say to you, dumb cat is I want you to go to the top zero, left zero, relative to the room you are in. Follow? So he's in the gray room originally. And that's where the HTML puts him, is in that gray room. The style moved him out. So I'm telling the gray room that whenever I tell one of your children, which the cat is a child in the, in the document, whenever I tell one of your children to go somewhere absolutely, I want them to do it relative to you, gray room. And so now he will go to the top left of the gray room because that's what we told him. 
Or I could have said, no, don't do it relative to the room you're in. Do it relative to the house. Now he goes there. Or I could even say, do it relative to the yard. And he will go there, which is different from where he went a minute ago. He went, what he does, and so believe it or not, this cat is more obedient than we give him credit for. Because you said, I want you to absolutely go to zero, zero. And he goes, okay, do you want me to do it relative to this room? And according to our code, no, we do not. Okay, do you want me to do it relative to the house? According to our code, no, we do not. Let's move this out. Do you want me to do it relative to our yard? No, I do not. And he's like, fine, I'll just do, I'll go as far as I can go without leaving the property. I'll go on top of the fence. So what's the fence in this metaphor? It's the edge of the document itself. It's That's outside of HTML, right? HTML is as far as you can go, but the document is a little bit further, right? Okay, so he's on the edge on the document. That's where he will go if you do not tell him relative to what. And we've talked about this idea of relative before, where if I say that the keys are in the drawer, well, that kind of depends on what desk you're sitting at, doesn't it? Right? And so if you're sitting at your desk, no, the keys aren't in your drawer, they're in my drawer or whatever. So this that's the same idea here. We're saying, I want you to be positioned absolutely, but relative to this room, or this room, or this room. And if you don't tell him which room, he will just assume you meant the whole document. Dig it? Okay, that's one of the trickiest parts about positioning, is grasping that. The moment I remove this absolute here, he just sits there and ignores you. So there are four properties, there are four positions, top, right, bottom, and left. You can position using all of those. There's no center, because center, there, there's no reference for it, right? The way you would do center is you calculate the width of the page, then divide it in half, which you can do that with JavaScript, right? All right, so we could tell him, I want you to go 200 pixels from the top, right? and 200 pixels from the left, that's 2,000, 200 pixels from the, I could tell him that, and again, he'll just simply ignore me. The only reason he's sitting where he's at right now is because my other style sheet that we haven't really looked at puts him there, right? Style sheet number one right here tells the cat that you are, where is it? No, it's not there, it's the padding right here in the gray room. There's a padding of 50 in the gray room. So that pushes the cat in a little bit by 50 pixels. But this style sheet number two overrides all that because it's further down in the document, right? That's why it's winning. And I did that on purpose, A, to show you how double style sheets work or triple or whatever, and B, just for the sake of explaining all this stuff. Okay. So back to the cat. This is where he's, that's his position that he was born with. That's where he just lives, right there. We can move him around by absolutely positioning him relative to his parent or grandparent or great-grandparent or the great-grandfather of all, you know, the document. All right, so right now he's not going anywhere because we didn't tell him to change his position. So now we're going to change him, your position to absolute. And now he will listen to us because we're firm. We say, absolute, move. And he goes 200 from the top of the document and 200 from the left of the document. If I were to change this part and put, make that from the gray room, now he's 200 over from this spot right here, right there in the corner. And again, if we move that to the yellow house, that'll put him roughly, I don't know, somewhere right in this range. I was a little off, but there is from the yellow is relative from that. So on down the line. So there's one other thing we have to watch out for. Okay. And this is when people first learn about the relative position, they do this and they, they confuse themselves. Okay. Let's put you back to where you belong, sir. OK, 
okay, you're right there. When I first learned about relative, this is how I saw everybody do this, okay? Let's go back to saying we want you to top zero, or let's go, yeah, we'll do zero. And bottom, no, not bottom, left, zero, okay? Now, again, he won't do anything because we didn't tell him absolute. But you can also tell him himself position relative. This gets weird, okay? When I do this, nothing changed. But he actually did do something different. What this means is I'm telling you, position yourself at zero, zero relative to where you are right now, which is exactly what he did. He's already at zero, zero, right? That's just where he's at relative to himself. He's not at zero, zero relative to any of the boxes on the screen, the gray or the yellow or the green. He's relative to himself. So if I said that I want you to move over 10 pixels, If I tell him to do that, he will move 10 from where he's at. Not 10 from the top of the gray, the room he's in, but from himself. He'll move over 10. And now he's over just 10 from where he was originally. So whenever you tell him to move, the first thing he does is looks. By move, I mean top, left, right, or bottom. Whenever you tell him to move, the first thing he does is go, okay, relative to what? Myself? which is what line 18 says. Nope, not myself. Okay. Well, is it the gray room, the yellow house, the green yard, anything like that? Not only is it not that, but they didn't tell me specifically anything about my position, so I don't even have a framework. So right now, I'm not going to do anything. But they said, okay, I want you to position yourself absolute. And then he still asks questions. Well, absolute relative to what? My mom, my grandma, my great-grandma, right? On up the line until you get to the end. Okay, how do we feel about that idea? Good? Okay. So let's just stick with that for a minute. We're going to make him go to the top of the page right now because we didn't specify. And notice he's 10 pixels over from the top of sitting on the fence. So if we put him back at zero, now he's back up there. Now, when I... Scroll, he just moves with the document, right? But you can change that behavior. You can say, I want you fixed. Notice he stays where he's at with one minor change. Watch what happens when I scroll. He's fixed. He does not move. The content scrolls behind him. And I can put him anywhere. I could put him, you know, 100 pixels over. I'll just scoot him down 100. So now he's going to stay there forever, no matter what happens, okay? Fixed means you're fixed to the screen. You, no matter, if I said I want you to be fixed relative to your house, it doesn't work. This will not do anything. It won't change anything. I'm refreshing. It just stays stuck to the document, to the, the browser, I should say, to the browser, okay? All right. So let's take a look at some of these different properties here. We have position. And the properties are static, relative, absolute, fixed, and sticky. What's static? It's the default behavior. Everything's position static. The behavior you've been seeing before you learned about this stuff today, that's position static. We've covered the other three, relative, absolute, and fixed. The last one is sticky. Sticky is a little weird, but what it does is it allows you to stick it to one position, but you can start it somewhere else. So I can start at the bottom of the screen, and then as you scroll, I can force it to move up and stick to the top or something like that. It's really cool. Let's look at it. I'm going to put you position sticky, and you're going to stick to the top 100. So what this means, let's refresh. This is where he lives normally, right? But as we start to scroll, he'll move up, and then when he hits 100, he sticks there. See that? He stays there. Okay. Let's do a better number, like 10. So he starts here. That's where he's born. As I scroll, he hits 10. But notice when he hits 10, the page keeps scrolling behind him. He stops there. He sticks there. Before I knew about Sticky, I would do that effect with menu navigation and things like that. So here's a website I built. And when I scroll, watch the top menu. 
just stays on the top, right? And you can, with Sticky, I can make the menu start maybe down a few inches or whatever, or down a couple pixels. And then when I scroll, it'll hit the top and stick to the top. Okay. And if you go in W3 Schools and play around with the Sticky section in there, it shows you some cool things you can do with it. All right. So there's Sticky for you. That's a fun one to use for menu navigation, things like that. So last one, Z-Index. This is the strange one we'll talk about in a second, but I want to make sure we feel okay about these position things. We're good? Once you've declared a position, one of these things, then you are now allowed to use top, bottom, left, or right, and position them exactly where you want, okay? And remember, whatever number you put after that, I'm saying I want you that many pixels over from the left or from the right or from the top or from whatever, okay? Now let's take a look at the Z index. Right now, the cat is on top of the gray box and the gray box is on top of the yellow window or the yellow house and so forth. The reason they're in that position is because they are in that order in here. It's just the order I put them in, right? The order of the document changes things. So in other words, if I put this box, this gray box here, oh, let's put this cat right here. This is the one that's got the cat in it. If I move the cat down to here, well, now he's over in that room because I moved the whole room. I didn't just move the cat, I moved the whole room. It's the order of the HTML, right? Okay, well, that's what determines what's on top of what. But you have, it's actually, there is a Z index and you have control of that layer. layer. The only way to do that though is you have to be using the position property as well. For example, right now the cat is on top of the gray room. I can put the cat behind the gray room if I want to. Okay, so here's how we do it. Go in our style sheet and we're gonna position the cat absolute. Actually, we'll do relative to itself. Relative to itself. And we're gonna change its Z index. Now, the way the Z index works, the default value of everything is zero. So everything's at Z index zero, which would theoretically mean everything is on the same plane, except position in HTML puts things on top of each other, okay? If I wanna move the cat back one, below the gray thing, what do I need to change its Z index to? Yeah, neg some negative number. Negative one will do it, okay? So I do negative one. Now let me see, let me just make sure where the cat class is being applied. And it's on this div right here, which holds the cat. So that, yeah, that div will go behind the gray room. Okay, here we go. Now to prove it, I'm gonna change the style in those gray rooms just a bit. And gray room, we're gonna give you opacity. There's a new one for you, 0.5. That's how opaque you are. What opaque is, is um, how see-through you are. So there's three levels of that in just the human world outside of code. Transparent is like a window. Translucent is like maybe these curtains here, you can kind of see through them a little bit. And then opaque is like the wall, you can't see through it. Well, how opaque are you? I'm halfway opaque. 0.5, 50% opaque, which means I'm a little bit see-through, okay? So now if I refresh, you can see the cats back there, right? I just made those gray things a little bit transparent. All right, let's make it like not so transparent here. Yeah, you, you can see them, and if I keep darkening it, in fact, what, I'm putting that, yeah. So watch what happens here. Open this up in the gray room and my opacity is right here. I'm gonna keep changing that to make it darker and darker. Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. I don't think it'll let me do a little bit at a time here. Yeah, it won't let me do a little bit of time. I was trying to inch it up and go 8, 0.86, 0.87, 0.89 until you suddenly see that the cat vanishes behind the box. But the only reason you can see the cat just a minute ago is because the opacity is set on these gray boxes to be able to see through it. The moment we turn it off, the default is that you are 100% opaque. In fact, here, here's a better way to prove it. Watch this. We'll position the cat, top, negative 100. So he'll move up 100 pixels from where he lives. And let me see that over here. Find the cat. Okay. 
and we want to just I'm gonna keep going till he shows up above the box there you see him now he's behind the yellow too why is he behind the yellow yellow's index is also zero so if I set yellow to negative one and the cat or put yellow to negative two and the cat at negative one then the cat should go between so let's test that theory out so let's let me think about this the yellow would need to be negative two and the cat is negative one and the gray room is zero i think that'll get us what we want and it should bring the cat yeah there we go so now the cat is between the two layers right all right that's it for the subjects for today how do we feel any questions about any of this stuff doing all right